Hello and welcome everyone. This is gonna be my ZVZ standard tutorial where I'm gonna explain how to play the the normal game of ZVZ where we're gonna take a third edge early and then we make a bailing nest and then we play defensive into the Roacher Avenger mid game and how to operate in the mid game. I'm not gonna talk too much about how to defend 13 12 since I made another video on that, but nowadays with the new overlord speed, uh, the the, the base speed of the Overlord being buffed a bit since that video, turn 12 is not really too much of a thing anymore. Then the other thing I won't really talk about is 12 pool defense. I'm going to make a separate guide on that. And then the third thing I won't really touch on up on at least too much is going to be late game, even though I don't think many of your games are going to go to late game. But if they are, I'm going to make an extra video on that too. <clears throat> so about the build order, it's going to be a, a 16 hatch. And then we make three extra drones. The second drone gets rallied and will become an extractor. The third drone will be rallied to become a spawning pool. You can make the spawning pool at the edge of the base, which is good to get additional vision. However, this pool will be very exposed against Muta play. So on maps where I can wall very easily, I can deny uh, Zerglings coming in. And on those maps, I do not usually put my pool in an exposed location. Also, if I, for example, if I plan on going Muta myself, I would put my spawning pool here because in Muta versus Muta, it's not really important how exposed your spawning pool is. So uh, just a, a quick thing to note here. Then I'm going to talk a bit about my first two overlords. The first one always goes straight to the natural unless there's maps where you need to deviate it to see 12 pool links coming. Which the only map I think that this is the case on on this map pool, uh, if your opponent is being smart with the 12 pool is Kairos. But other than that, just straight up send it to the natural and you should be fine. And also one thing to notice, we are not making a 19 or a 20 overlord here, we're making this 21st drone. The reason we can do this in ZVZ, uh, pretty much every single game, is because you don't need to make four zerglings right away, which means with the two larvae that will, that will pop, we can make an overlord. This will not supply block you. This is more efficient than making an overlord earlier on in the game. So 21st drone. Now that the hatchery is done, we start two queens, a drone from the natural, and an overlord from the main base. The This will be a, a common theme of when you have to make an overlord, because the if you go 16 hatch, you should the hatchery finishes, um, at the same time as the pool and the larva should be pretty much exactly synced up so you will get two larvae at the same time and if you have to decide with making a, a drone or a pair of links from one hatchery compared to overlord from another always make the drone from the natural because it will get more mining time than if i would have made the overlord in my main and the, the drone from my natural so then here i see the creep i wait until I spend the next two larva on this map, you don't even get the larva before you see the creep. But I would wait until I see the 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 creep with making these next two drones, because if it's pool first, there is a build that is 16 pool where you run by six zerglings, and you want to start four zerglings right now. If I didn't see the creep, pretty much. And then the next step is pulling two drones off gas at 100. So you can see me pull one drone and two drones off gas, and then the next with the next two larva, I make two more drones. Instead of the four zerglings, there were one drone from my main, I rally back into the gas. This is just a small optimization. If you are having trouble doing this, just keep two in gas instead of pulling two off. And this drone will get rallied to my third base. And now the next thing I'm focusing on is, do I see this hatchery wiggling? Or, or going up and down or moving a bit? Because this means a queen is in production. So there's a couple of reasons why there couldn't be a queen in production. One would be a, a speedling flood with only one queen, where they go for a a hatch before the overlord, hatch gas pool, similar to what Sarah did against Rogue on Parasite and at BlizzCon. Also one thing you can note about this build is that the creep will be further. So it's good to compare your creep on your natural with your opponent's creep. If his creep is way further, um, there is a bit of RNG in creep spread in Wolf, but if it's way further, it's almost always gonna be this build. And if the hatch isn't wiggling, most of the time it's gonna be a three hatch before pool. Against which, by the way, I'm not gonna go over this more but uh, against 3 hp before pool you can also just play this opening and be completely even although i think it's good to make like eight speed links to pressure since your speed is earlier than his opponent and you can keep them honest um but yeah 3 hp before pool is not that much more efficient than the build that i'm about to show you and now the next thing the next piece of information we got is the amount of drones he has at the natural so we can can compare this with ours we have five drones 
on the natural because we didn't make any zerglings from our main uh, or so far and we also did not and we also did pull two drones off gas so me seeing three drones here pretty much means either he's only making drones and has three drones on gas or he made a pair of zerglings um, and has two drones off on gas <clears throat> for example with a plus one carapace build I could uh, potentially only see uh, one or two drones here. And now we see the drone leaving for the third base. Our third hatchery will start uh, at 32. If we see Zerglings, if we don't see Zerglings from our opponents, we started at 30 and then start the Zerglings afterwards. But we're making four links now. Those are to scout and defend. And I, if my opponent would have made four Zerglings, I would have probably made six. I like to just have two more than my opponent, uh, then you're not running the risk of losing the four, four ling versus four ling battle. And yeah, so the next thing is, after the inject, right away I poke a bit to the front of my natural to uh, take away a bunch of vision from my overlords. You will see my overlords are parked here. The, they are safe from uh, any queen assault. And like basically if there was a queen pushing, the overlord could go to the bottom. So having having overlords uh, behind ledges or, or corners or something is very, very good against queens. And only really commit to the overlord kill if you know you're going to get it, because otherwise you will just lose inject time. So you will see me turn around here pretty soon. Under direct assault. And right, the building mess goes down at 33, and right after that we make an overlord. So overlord. Our third overlord goes here. Our fourth overlord goes here to see Ling and Bailing assaults of our opponent coming and seeing exactly where the Bailings are coming from. That is very important in order to know how exactly to split up your army in case you are being uh, Ling Bane attacked. And now those four Lings are pretty much just scouting. At home, I'm making usually six to eight Zerglings while this is going on. So I can morph at least four Bailings. In case of a Ling Bane Olin. Ling Bane are not a, a common thing on high level because you can just have a similar amounts of Bane Links plus the Queens and usually always defend bigger number of Zerglings with fewer number of Zerglings as long as you have the correct unit control. So yeah, I'm just going around here. Excuse me one second. I have a bit of a cold. And I'm not quite advanced enough yet to to cut together my videos. This is just really one take and <laughs> putting it all together. So you will see me scouting here. Um, what happens with in the build order? Just the very early parts. I think you should uh, copy pretty much exactly the way it is. Once you get to 42 supply, you start uh, three things: the overlord first, then the evil chamber, and then the queen in the main base. The third queen in the main base. Now you will see me 42 supply and overlord. And only drones, other than that, only drones. And unless I see zerglings with this, like a lot of zerglings with this, I would uh, make only drones. So here comes the evil chamber, and then I start the queen in the main base. Why do I start the queen in the main base? This will allow me to, after this inject, put the queen from the main down to the natural, and the queen from the natural down to the third base. This is better to deny scouting zerglings, and it's also better against uh, attacks. Because imagine I would. I've made my third queen in the natural. I could only put this queen to the front and this one would um, need to stay here to inject or if I put it to the front, I would not have nothing to inject in my main base during an, during an assault of my opponent. And what I'm scouting for here right now is pretty much, do I see Zerglings? Zerglings would have leave, left the base right around now. Like uh, this is when the first inject uh, worth of Zerglings would pop. So around 340, I scout in. I, I see a Bailing Nest and an Evolution Chamber. That is enough for me to know that I'm safe to just make more drones. Also, one important factor here is that I saw that he made defensive bindings, which if my opponent would want to be offensive or like do any sort of all in, he would not have done that. And am I worried about a roach assault right now? Not really. Uh, this map is pretty big. On smaller maps, you can, if you're bad against like roach all-ins reactively, uh, you can just try to get into the main base with a circling and confirm that there's a super early roach warning. There's no reason. Uh, for having a roach horn right now other than if you want to be offensive with it unless you skip the banning nest so yeah. now i'm scouting if there's any drones if there I, I actually am running into a bit of a supply look here but usually i'm around 50 drones right now 
and if there would be no drones here and it would be a roach island it's still very easily defended by just spines and making a roach one myself so yeah all right they got the gases i took at the same time at four minutes because this was a passive game but i don't want you guys to to go by time necessarily uh, I take the gases when I'm around 40 drones and once I start additional drone production. Until then I'm just staying on one gas. Swarm. And yeah, my first 100 gas goes into plus one missile and my next 100 gas will go into the lair. And you can start the roach one pretty much at the same time as the lair. If you want to be very optimal about it, start it a bit after. And the next 100 gas after the lair goes into overlord speed. Very important scouting tool. That is pretty cheap because uh, overseers without overlord speed are not actually um, good at scouting. Like against a good player that stutter steps his queens properly, you will never get uh, to scout more than one base with a slow overseer. So I scouted his gas timings, which is pretty normal. Um, maybe one thing to note: how would Muta look like? This could still absolutely be Muta. So overlord speed very important to scout the first over uh, overseer. Even though there's a watch for him, very often Muta players still do. This exact set setup. Also, I would suggest for everyone to use this wall off uh, on every map where you can wall without a creep tuner. It's pretty much very important to have exactly one space here for the queen to block scouting and also against assaults very often or, or link bane attacks. Very often you can just put one queen here and then focus all your attention around this area with the link bane control. So this kind of wall off really, really helps. And yeah, I go up to around 40, uh, 68 drones, and then I take a, a four attachery as well as a second evolution chamber, so we can start two one upgrades at the same time. You might wonder why, why, why would you always see this two one upgrades? Aren't double upgrades better? Or it, the the most important thing to note is that the plus one carapace is just as good in pure roach versus roach battles as the plus one attack as well as the plus one plus two attack. Like all of those are equally as important. Even though the attack gives more extra attack than the armor gives armor, because um, how the math in Roach versus Roach works out is that the plus one attack and the plus two attack both make it so the Roaches will take one less shot per, per upgrade uh, to kill an opponent's Roach, and the plus one armor, regardless of your opponent's upgrades, will make your opponent's Roaches take one extra shot to kill them. So. Plus one armor very important. Plus two carry pace actually does nothing in pure ro roach versus roach, but it's very expensive. So that's why we're going, going to two one upgrades very early on. Complete. Also getting the upgrade earlier, the plus one carry pace would just be very expensive. So now that my overlord speed is done, I'm gonna scout in with the overseer and I will be using zerglings that are left over for baiting drops. I think those are very often very efficient, especially because the, the zerglings are not the most important units anymore. And it only costs you 25 minerals and 25 gas. You're not really gas starved with this kind of style. Like it, basically this is one less ravager for me right now. And it it can it has the potential to kill a lot of workers as well as deny a lot of mining time. So I scout a higher than right here. Uh, what would have happened if I scout mutas? I'm gonna go over that in in a later game. Excuse me. So I, I, I will go over that in a, in a later game or maybe in a later guide if this one takes too long. So now that I know that it's a hydro then, in a pure roach versus roach game, I would have probably drawn up at least eight drones to my fourth base right away as soon as I see six gas. One thing that could be scary right now is a five gas roach speed plus one all in without a fourth base. We already knew he took the fourth base, I saw it with an overlord. But. Um, if I saw there was a gas missing, and if I saw... I, th the first thing I would check after I see that there's a gas missing is if this evolution chamber is still upgrading after it's plus one. You can click his units or a queen to see if his plus one is done, and then if this is not upgrading anymore, I would cancel this fourth base and probably cancel one of the upgrades uh, in order to hold uh, the attack. On big maps like this, I think it's even fine to finish both upgrades if you, have, if you didn't uh, fuck up too much in the early game. <coughs> Also, uh, if you remember at the start, I described where the first four overlords go. So here, 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 and here. And then afterwards, if you if you remember to do so, like the next overlords, every overlord kind of fulfills 
a row like the next one goes here and here to get more map control in the middle of the map the next one goes here to see drops or overseers incoming and as soon as the overlord spears then you should really just split up your overlords once we have time so if there's that time like right now right about now in a zvz usually there's nothing uh, going on so just focus on hitting your injects and spread your overlords and use patrol so they can't just uh, kill your overlords with corrosive also replace the you will see this overlord go here because i use this overlord to make an overseer to get the scouting as early as possible so make sure to not forget about replacing this spot otherwise you will have a blind spot and then also one thing you can do is drop roaches with the overlord speed but yeah now now we're going into mid game uh if you're out of vision range of the if you're out of vision range, you should always drop them before you actually get to the mineral line because if there's a roach below the overlord, like one way you can defend this very well is just putting a roach on, on follow on the overlord uh, while the queen is attacking as well. So you're kind of on a timer and the banings will explode on the roach always. So you can try to lose it with man maneuvering around the hatchery, but doing this is usually better. It also gives him a bit less reaction time. So yeah, this is a lot of kills, uh, very good. Even even if I just in a mining time, I think this is an okay move to go for. And since I knew he has a Hydradon, I think going Hydradon early is really, really bad in a normal UVZ. The reason for that is the Hydradon costs gas. And if you're actually making Hydras, it also costs gas. And until they're, they're, they're useful, you need both of those upgrades, which takes a lot of time and again, gas. And if you want to go straight to Lucas, it also costs again, gas, as well as minerals, obviously. And that just makes it so you have more Ravagers and you have the better army, which means you can take map control. So don't be afraid to move out on the map. Just by scouting with the Overseer, you should be able to tell that, uh, okay, I can I can be on the map. If my opponent was like five gas right now and didn't have fourth base, I wouldn't be on the map. But if my opponent, if I'm staying on 66 drones, my opponent's making higher than hell, yeah, I'm going to be on the map. And I'm going to try to make stuff happen. And I don't want to talk too much about mid game, but... Uh, one of the, the the most important things to note about ZVZ mid game is one, always try to fight in a concave. Uh, for, for everyone that listened to to tasteless casting ZVZs, a con concave always favors the the player who has a concave rather than the convex. And then the other thing is split up your army as much as you can, if you have the multitasking to do so, because in order to defend in ZVZ, you need to over split your army. Which, uh, like, if, I, if I'm trying to defend four roaches, I'm not going to put four roaches there. No, I'm going to put at least six roaches there. And especially if they have borrow movement, which means the more places I have four roaches at, the the less, like, the, the more uh, the more advantageous the numbers of the actual fighting army of the main armies are. So... Yeah, also if you overlord drop with roaches, always focus fire the queen first because the queen is kind of a timer on the overlord. I'll, I'll try to not to talk too much about this, but pretty much if you if you're cutting back with crucifies, you're gonna trade pretty pretty well. No matter if the your opponent I guess as long as you don't get caught off guard with a small too small army with us around you. Retreating with crucifies is very strong. And I'm getting Roach Bro movement behind this. And a lot, of, a lot of times I get the transition, uh, the, the question, how, when do I transition? I think right around now I could throw down a Hydrogen, but since my opponent has a Hydrogen, I'm pretty sure I can do make stuff happen with the map control I have with pure Roach Avenger. So that's why I'm not making a Hydrogen or an Infestation Pit. And yeah, there's another drop. So right now I'm just trying to pull my opponent apart. Also, the, the advantage of having map control is that we can kill Overlords. And if your opponent has no vision, by the way, look at my vision. Uh, we can see pretty much most of the map. We have stuff here, stuff here, a couple of roaches here. Swarm and yeah, once your opponent is out of position, the way usually you win ZVZs is you get a concave. And for example, let's say he didn't have any army here. I could make my concave like this, like spread out in an arc like this. And then send five roaches here and he would need to engage into me. And that's very good for you. But since he, since he was there, I was just retreating while killing stuff.
Okay, this is actually my second take of trying to make this video. The first video, I just talked about this game for 40 minutes because I tried to explain all my moves, but this is not what this should be about. This is more about how to get to the stage and then the general idea of trying to get your opponent out of position and then taking good fights uh, is more important than the execution that you can see in this game. Obviously, I like. I, I, I'm killing a lot of workers and I'm transitioning to Hive against the Lurkers. Vipers are the counter. The late game army you want to have eventually will be Hydra Viper with a couple of Lurkers, but a lot of Vipers. Uh, but right now, since he needs to defend everywhere, he's just kind of standing in between bases. So I'm attacking here with a Concave, now I'm attacking here with a Concave. I'm just kind of dancing around the Lurkers a bit. And yeah, I killed a lot of drones. And eventually I got a good position and I just, like, I even have, I think I already have 5% I'm not even using, but we managed to kill him. This was mainly due to him going Hydra, so he's defensive, and as soon as the defensive player makes a mistake, usually it can snowball very easily. Now, if you're a lower level player that is not that good with multitasking, I think the best way you can, uh, you can do this is just split your army in two. And wait, let's go back around here. Let's say I, I don't have all these harassment squads going on. So I have this army right now, right? I would just select this and then with the alt hotkey, I would press alt two. So I would have this army on a, on a different hotkey than my main army and then go here with this. And now all the units that I would have afterwards, I would, uh, all the units that I'm making, like, I, I, I uh, add all the units that I'm making like the cocoons into my main army group and then go here. And if I see that he has not, not enough units, I will just push up here with the with the part of the army that I just removed from my main army. And if he has enough units, which usually means more than the amount that I have here, I would attack at another place with the rest of my army. This is very easy to do. And then the other thing you can do, if you don't even want to split up your army, is just try to walk around constantly, like in between here and here and here. And once you see him out of position, you try to get into a concave and in the end win the fight. So I'm, I'm just gonna resume this real quick and show what I mean. So so the first thing the first thing I will do is just split up this army and now attack here and now all my reinforcements would come down here. If he has too much I can just like I'm, I'm checking it with the overseer right? If he has enough here. I can go back and then attack with everything else here and maybe once he's coming down from this ramp I could attack here and then I would have a concave attacking from both sides. And then the the other thing I could do that if you really don't feel comfortable splitting up your army is to just keep walking around. You can try to always check with an overseer where your opponent's army is and just make a concave and an A move. For example, once, once I see he has no units up here, I take this concave as I said before, attack like this, just put up a couple of roaches up here and keep the concave. And as he attacks you A move, as he backs off, you back off a bit like this. As he attacks you A move, you back off. Eventually he just he just needs to uh, engage into you. Just keep the concave and obviously if he just lets the space go, we have an, a superior economy. So that's I think the best way to play out the uh, Roach, Roach Javier versus Roach Javier stage. So then the next, the next thing, this was a very standard game, right? A very passive game. If you're any problems against all ins, let me know while I'm streaming and chat. I can I can help you quite easily. I think I don't think ZVZ all ins are too good against the build that I'm doing. If you're on top of your scouting and reacting appropriately, so this game will be against a two base layer. and the openings will be very similar. Shout out to Anton by the way because he played some custom games with me for this. I told him he has to play 2 base layer because no one on ladder does it anymore really. So yeah, I just wanted to show this off because I think it's still a very, very common build. Similar openings again. So we're going 20 drone and then 21st drone as well. 21st drone, a lot of people are still doing 19 overlord even which is really bad. So don't do that. Again, drone, drone from the natural overlord from the main base. Actually the fourth overlord, before I forget. That you start at 33 or 32 rather after the bailing nest. 
even though you have a larva from the main and the natural, you will make it from the natural because it otherwise doesn't arrive here in time. The same was for Newport on most maps. The third overlord goes to the second entrance of the third base. The fourth overlord goes to the second entrance of the, the third base. So in this case here on Newport, it was to the, to the right, to the right side. And that's why I make it at the natural usually. But other than that, usually if you have two live at the same time, always make the drone from the natural and the overlord from the main. We saw his drone count. We saw he didn't make any zerglings, so we know he has three in gas. Just a, just a quick thing. And now we're getting an evolution chamber because I right now I, I noticed that there's no third no drone leaving to the third base. Which even if he would go bang us before third base, by 230 the, the drone would have had to leave in order to take the third base. So we're getting an evolution chamber. So now you might be wondering what what if uh, my opponent just goes for a two base link bane on him? This is obviously not something that is happening on pro level. And the way I would respond to it, or the reason why it doesn't happen is because in order for this to work, uh, you need like, ju just in general, on, on maps where you can even play two base layer are maps where you can wall off well without a creep tumor. So I can do this myself too. And in order to link bane bus, you need hidden bane links, which if you have good, good overlord spotting, you should never, uh, not see zerglings leave his base. And then I would just match the amount of my opponent's zerglings plus two, scout with the two zerglings and then chase his zerglings. Like I, it would already be super suspicious. So I would uh, probably make a bailing nest myself at that point already, but you can make a bailing nest and then cancel it once you see the, the wall too. If you're, if you're having trouble against this kind of stuff, just saying, but if he doesn't do these hidden zerglings, if he just goes straight up and then more spanlings here, my wall, I would just wall reactively with three buildings and the wall would be done way before he arrives. So yeah, I, I would probably start a building nest here, a spine and a three building wall and there's nothing, nothing that could do. So now we spot this. There's another two base opening that I haven't talked about, which is the plus one carapace opening. And against, if they play that, they, they cannot have a roach farm. <laughs> Excuse me, and an evolution chamber this early on in the game. So by three minutes, the evolution chamber and the roach farm needs to be down if they play this opening, which they cannot do if they play uh, plus one carry pace with an evolution chamber right away in the main base. So I I, I just spotted that there he didn't start and he did indeed start the upgrade. Even if he goes for link pressure though, he can start the upgrade. So be mindful of that. But the one thing that I really want to know is if he starts this this upgrade too. Because if he starts Roach Speed, then you will see me scouting for that. By the way, I take my guesses very specifically against two base layer. You don't need to do that. Like, I, I take my guess exactly so I can rally this inject in here and then I take the next guess so I can in rally the inject from my main. You can just take two guesses at three, 350, which is 10 seconds earlier uh, than the game before. But that's because we skipped the bailing nest. I'm also making eight extra links, but I'm going to talk about it in a second. So uh, I see I see that Roach Speed is on the way, right? And that makes it so he cannot possibly have gas for a Nidus or a Spire if I see both of these upgrades going up. So I do already not need to worry about those anymore. But one thing you should always do against the two base layer build is start your Roach Horn around 340. The reason for that is the, you can have Roaches in time against the two base Nidus. And you can have roaches in time against the roach lingolan, which is also a, a thing in uh, ZVZ from two base. Uh, so yeah, and it, if I didn't see this, for example, it could be either Muta or Roach, uh, Roach Nidus, as I said. I would make eight blind roaches at least right away as soon as this is done. And if by the time those roaches are done, the Nidus isn't done, it's not a Nidus anymore. So it's most likely Muta, and after that, I would just drone. And with the new Nidus, if you have 10 roaches, you can't Nidus your in, inside your base anymore anyways, so just keep that in mind. But I see it's Roach Speed, so it's most likely either a 2 gas Roach Speed all in or a 3 gas Roach Speed pressure. And I'm making these links um, in case it's a Speed Link pressure. I make, I'm making those before I see the Roach Speed. And if it's a Speed Link pressure, I would just make more links myself, but you need some already, otherwise you would just be outnumbered. Also, they can... 
deny if you only have two zerglings you can take a third base greedily with two queens just pushing away your zerglings which is uh, which is I mean it would be good for him because you're oversaturated otherwise with this build also exactly 10 links not 8 not 12 because 10 links force him to stay at home with more than 2 roaches to defend his third base while he's moving out 12 links still would lose against the 3 roaches I think especially with the queen so yeah now the move out starts happening so the advantage of these 2 base layer builds is that they have roach speed first so they can move out and you kind of just need to uh, make roaches and stay defensive and usually their upgrades are ahead but I got my upgrade really early too myself so And yeah, I stopped. I stopped droning at forty-seven. Uh, you can sometimes even go up higher, especially on maps that are bigger. But Kairos is a very short rush distance map, so I stopped at forty-seven. I think usually around forty-six to forty-eight is very safe to stop at. And then I make around sixteen roaches, and until I see that there are no roach reinforcements coming anymore, I start droning again. So right now I feel safe, and I drone up again. I think you can go up to like after I see that there's not that many roaches anymore. I think you can go up to, after making around 15 roaches, up to 52 to 56 drones on 4 gas. And then you should wait until you confirm that there are indeed drones on your opponent's third base. We're not morphing an overseer by the way, we're very low on gas, we're spending all our gas right now on roaches. We also don't have gas for overload speed. This is a more of a low economy um, game than the game before, because he opened to base layer. So you see me still making roaches here until I will confirm that there is indeed drones at the third base. So now I see the drones, I make a couple of extra drones, I start overload speed. Start overloads because I'm supply blocked, so I'm not selling drones. <clears throat> and I will morph an overseer to check for roach barrel movement. There's also one of the follow ups of this is very quick barrel movement, so I want to check for that. The Roche Warren is not wiggling, so I know it's not the Roche Bar movement. And then the most common follow up is the one he's doing right now, is where they just get two one upgrades. Usually they will goop on your Evo Chamber once. I actually think it's better to go for plus one care pace rather than plus two attack. They cost the same, they do the same in Roche versus Roche engagements, but the plus one care pace takes like 20 seconds less. And. Usually if they hit this timing, it's going to be with 2-1 for them against 1-0 for you. If you're trying to go for plus 2, but it can be 1-1 one, one for you if you're trying to go for the carapace upgrade. In this case, he didn't go my evolution chamber even once, so my plus 2 got done. Also, I cancelled borrow and borrow movement because I saw that there was no gases. I, um, if I saw that he was on 5 or 6 gas, I would probably have gone up to 66 drones. In this case, I stayed on... 60 and I didn't take a fourth base if I see six gas I would take a fourth base go 66 drones and probably even roach Boro and Boro movement So right now I know I'm on a higher economy, which means I just need to keep the concave and defend and Yeah, that's Like a lot of ZVZ mid game is just army movement decisions army splitting decisions later on and That's really what wins and loses you the games. So he goes up the ramp, we have the concave on him, he has one upgrade better than us. And I mean our armies are rather similar but... Also try to not have ravagers at the front because those are very easily sniped. But you can see me go forward and focus firing ravagers now. I try to do it with around uh, 9 to 10 roaches to one shot the ravagers and not over damage too much. Try to split away from the corrosive bites as you can see. I mean that's obvious stuff. But that's just uh, stuff you need to learn. And after I defend this, I think I start droning right away again. Yeah, and I will also start my fourth base because now I feel safe. And then, since I know I already mined more than him, even though I'm still behind in upgrades, all I need to do basically to finish out the game is just keep trading. I have more gas in him, so I should be more ravager heavy. And the way you transform ravager heavy, like being ahead in the ravager count, into an actual victory is. You corrosive bile. You have more corrosive bites than your opponent, right? You corrosive bile. Wait until he retreats, and then, then you push. And if he has like, let's say he has three ravagers, and I have six, like in this scenario, 
if you want to push forward, what you should do is throw out two crossbites first, wait until he crossbites, and then throw out another wave. Uh, that's how you advance, because he needs to... Whoever crossbites last, if that makes sense, will get a bit of an uh, advantage in pu pushing forward, because the other guy needs to pull back a bit later than you, which means you can start advancing earlier. So I had Ravager at the front there, which was a mistake. And now I saw he used his Ravagers, his Grosser Bites, so now I'm pushing in. And you can see I have a Concave here. This is, by the way, why I don't like this. I think this third base is not good to take. Uh, one thing, I'm not going to go over how to, how in which order to take the bases on every map, but uh, you can you can figure that out yourself. The, the way the decision making behind taking bases should usually be what makes it the hardest for my opponent to to go in between bases or rather what makes it the easiest for me to stay in a defender's concave which you can see my four base setup right if he tries to push in here he needs to go all the way around here to push in here or all the way around here to push in here and i can very easily just rotate here and always have a concave on him whereas if he has these four bases i like the the amount of distance that i need to to go from one base to to, to another is like there's uh, less margin of error for him in the defense to always be in position. This is just pretty standard micro. Always pull back where you have less units in him, pull forward on the side where you have more focus fire ravagers if you see some exposed. And GG. That is mostly just uh, reacting to how many drones I spot and reacting to two base layer. So that's pretty pretty standard gameplay right there. And again, I think this is also the easiest way to play it if you're not that good in, with multitasking. Just get up 66 drones and try to just focus on getting good engagements with Road Traveler. You don't need to try to transition. You don't need to try to be um, fancy or anything with your micro. Uh, one more thing that I want to talk about real quick is I, I plan on making this guide also against Anti-Muta. And I want to show a game against... Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do it now really quick. I guess there's not too much to explain. Let's see. Because I don't want this to be too long. So. Okay, so let's watch this game. I honestly, I prepared like five replays, but in the end I can't show all of them because there's just too much to talk about. And I know once I'm done with the video, I will, all re I will remember like 10 things that I forgot to mention, but... I hope I, I got the most important stuff. If I forget anything, I'm gonna, probably going to write it in the comments. If you have any questions, you can always ask me. Prefer be in Twitch chat because it's a lot easier for me to answer while talking rather than writing like a an essay on on your complicated questions in the YouTube comments. Sometimes it's even easy questions, but I want to answer them pro appropriately. So. so this game is on Blue Shift. Blue Shift not in the map pool anymore, but it... It, it's, uh, it's more about the reacting of what I'm seeing. So again, we're going hatch, gas pool. And extra drone. And in this case, I see the zerglings. Usually, if people play pool first, they try to hide the zerglings. You can, especially on this map. He could have seen zerglings around the top. But I see the zerglings, so... Usually, I would right now make just at least six zerglings, usually even eight. Since I saw two, I'm only going to make two or four. I see this timing. And the thing that changes if you play against pool first is that you keep three drones in gas. The reason for that is a potential gas pool hatch build, where they would have zergling speed and a baiting nest earlier than you. And if they all end with that, you what you want to do, I'm just going to explain this real quick, is, well, you, you're, you're going to get your baiting nest at 50 gas, which I'm going to do now too. With three drones in gas, this should be early enough for your bailings to finish just as he attacks. I would put two queens on my ramp. I would pull all my drones from my natural to my main base and more bailings on the ramp. And then you just defend it because you will have an equal amount of bailings to your opponents plus 70 queens. And I would probably cancel my third base. So what I'm doing right now is exactly what I talked about. I make the bailing nest. I saw I saw with the overlord that he's taking a third base, so I know it's not two base layer. Otherwise, I I would go scouting right now to see if he has a wall off or not, and then play cancel the bending nest and play 
similar to the way I played the game before. Take a hatchery after the Bane Nest later on, I think 32, and then make an overword after that. And then the game proceeds very, very standard. Um, you can pretty much apply everything that I, I talked about in the, in the Port Alexander game before to this game as well. So the Evo Chamber you will see go down around the same, then the, the extra queen and the main base. I pull the, the queen from the main to the natural, the, from the natural to the third. And I will scout with the Zerglings if there's any aggression. I morph two defensive Banelings. It's super, super, super standard. And this game, it's not only a pull first opening, like this, this game is pretty, pretty even right now, but also it will be a, uh, a quick muta build, which I will scout. I see that there's already gas done here. And I will see the layer timing, which is too early to be a, a roach build, so I know it's muta at this point pretty much. So what I'm gonna do is, I will make additional queens, start spreading creep. Like, th th these should be your reactions against muta is drones, extra banelings, extra queens, spread creep. Do not panic and make too many spores early on. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see. Even like mid, mid GM players do all the time. Make like one spore per base first. By the time the mutas could hit your base, most likely they're gonna try to kill some overlords first. So don't just make three because it's less drones that you have as well. Because you lose the minerals for the drones, the extra drones you would make, and you lose the drones that, that are morphing into a spore. So I will I will confirm the muta. I'm pretty sure. All right. Also, one thing: if you if you make defensive zerglings and bane links, and your opponent attacks, and you have stuff left over, just counter attack. I will also include one game where I play against Rainer in the all, all these replays. I'm gonna upload, uh, and they're gonna be found in the comment section. I'm also gonna upload a replay where Rainer link bane all me, and I think that acts as a good example of how to defend this because I feel like a lot of lower league players have trouble against this kind of stuff. So that should help. My yeah, layer timing is not very very important. One thing that I need to stress right now is that Hydras are not good against Mutas early on in the game. So your initial defense should always be Queens, Spores, Banes and Roaches. Not Hydras. You get a Hydra then very early, but that's so you can get a Lurker then very early. Because as soon as you have Lurker Spore, you're safe against most of the Ling Bane Muta attacks. Yeah, so that happened. And right now we're ahead in drones, and he needs to be on such a low drone count, otherwise he's susceptible to roach timings if he goes for it maybe this early. So we're just, we're having, as we can see, me morphing additional banelings, making some roaches and just drones, and now I'm taking all my gas and the hydro then. And right now I have like one spore per base, and not more than that, because right now I'm not not afraid of mutas. I even have queens in between, so the initial set of spores should be one per base and one in between. And then as the muta count grows, you can reactively get more. You can get more spores. One thing to note that this is about Ling Bane Muta, not Muta into Roach. Muta to Roach looks very different. They make Roaches first, Mutas later, and then more Roaches. This was uh, quite obviously a Ling Bane Muta build, and I also scouted. And there wasn't a Roach one, there wasn't even an Evolution Chamber. Against Roach Muta, you can go Roach Hydra. Against that, Hydras are okay. But yeah, so the so the hard part about playing against Muta is mainly that you lose all your, all your vision, as you can see. So, creep spread is very important. Most of the time, they will still kill the creep, so it's never really going to get out of control because they have Mutas and you can't leave your spore crawlers. But uh, it definitely helps. One thing that's also really good is Roach Bore movement because it forces the Mutas to go at home. I'm not sure if I actually get Roach Bore movement this game, but yeah. So all those Hydras you, you see me make right now, they're not against the Mutas, they're for making Lurkers. And as soon as I feel safe, I'm gonna take a fourth base. In a more standard game, usually the Mutas a bit later, and I would try to defend my first, my, my, my fourth base before the Mutas arrive. But that's when he goes to, for Mutas off of 66 drones, that was more of a two base-ish Muta. And now you can see I added additional spores, so we have like three per base now. You can see me still adding spores like one by one just to uh, to be very safe. That very important is also to have a lot of uh, spores at the front because usually the, the, the Ling Bane 
attacks will will come in from the front. Ah, yeah, and early infestation pit for for a viper. You do not want to move out before you have vipers ever. You just want to to defend against Miras. And since he starts clearing up my creep, I will start making overseers to put changelings. Changeling is, or or borrowed roaches or something, this is the only way we can get vision and get a better reaction time on, on where my opponent's attack is coming from. All right. So and as soon as you have lurkers, you should always borrow two lurkers at each base. Two lurkers are enough to one shot Bane. So if I have like two lurkers, also slightly behind score is very important. Otherwise, Mutas can pick them up. If I have like two lurkers here and there's a group of banelings, they will just one shot them. And eventually your goal is to just go Hydra, Lurker, Viper, uh, attack if he's trying to transition or if he's trying to go ultra you, if you want to play it perfectly you just don't want to attack but you can also attack against that. I will also include a replay against uh, ultra where I play ultra defensive. But right, these roaches, even though they're not really doing anything, they keep the Muras at home, which gives you space to do this. Um, Muras usually always find good traits on your side, like, even if you have, like, a really good defensive setup, they, they, they seem to always find a unit in between your spores somehow. So Lurk is very good against circling one base too. That was a bit sloppy by me. I should have, uh, I should have had more hydras here, but I chased, I chased his rings a bit too far. But I, I knew he wasn't transitioning, so I just decided to attack. Also, lurker bow upgrade very important against this specifically, even more so than a normal roach versus roach game. Well, I mean, you should never do that. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty much once I max out and he stays on his army, which he's really committed to, right? He can't, he he just started a lurker then. Uh, you just want to attack as soon as you're maxed out pretty much, while leaving a couple of lurkers behind, so... And I would recommend to use Borrow Movement Roaches to force him back while you're moving out. Because there's a lot of stuff, like, if you're not looking at your army for one second, Baneling Muta can just destroy it. Or he can pick off Lurkers, and that way, if I if I would have waited for... I had more these roaches, but if, if I would have waited for these roaches, the Mutas would have went home and this kind of stuff can't happen. And yeah, so just to, th this wasn't perfect or anything, but since this also was a pool first game, I figured let's let's do two in one. Um, important against Midas to begin with. If it's very early Midas, we stay on three base, three base until we get lurkers out. If it's high economy Midas, we we try to defend our fourth base. And we just defend the early waves of Lingmen Midas with Roach, Bane, Queen, Sporecrawler. Not with Roach Hydra. Roach Hydra is really terrible and you're always going to die against speed bane attacks. Uh, try to get the Lurkers out as early as possible and then go to a Hive. And if your opponent is going for Ultralisk, never attack. If your opponent is trying to transition to Lurkers, you can attack. If you just take very good trades, you can also attack because that's fine. Uh, but usually I would wait until Vipers because as soon as you have Vipers in your army, the Muras can't engage anymore because they need to split it up and... If they're split up, they don't fight all, so it's uh, uh, very good to wait until you have the parasitic bombs online in order to move out. And just a quick summary on the on the standard build order. Even though this was this was building nest before third hatchery, with three in gas, usually we pull two off gas, then we pull put one drone back in gas, take a third hatch at thirty, building nest at thirty three then an overlord, and then we just make drones while having 10 defensive links with like two of these, we morph into banelings. 
and very important we try to constantly scout resurgence on the other side of the map um i think you should just really if, if you're not good with scouting you should just force yourself to focus on it uh during your practice games or during your letter games it will not only make your multitasking better but it will uh, you will you will get better eventually so yeah i hope that helped this entire guide was brought to you by all my subscribers that subscribe for sub goals so you can thank them uh, they you've got you've all been a huge support on my lumbros and i hope uh, a bunch of this information was useful to all of you and yeah see you in the next guide or on twitch hopefully <laughs>